Good evening, it's Jeremy. It's Tuesday, July the 12th. And uh, this evening I'm going to attempt to receive the hydrogen line. Uh, in the previous uh, blogs and uh, blog posts and video uh, YouTube videos, um, I've done some planning for that. And what I'm doing is I'm using my Go 16 uh, dish that uh, worked at 1600 uh, megahertz. And hopefully it'll work on 1420 megahertz for the hydrogen signal. I've got a hydrogen line specific LNA BPF that works at 1420 megahertz and it's connected to LMR 400 coax cable and there's my RTL with the VST and uh, right now I'm running um, SDR sharp so what I'm going to do this evening I've been working at this uh, all week long it's really tough this is the hardest thing I've done in the last two years uh, I tried fixing the antenna to the um, balcony using my balcony mount and waiting for the Milky Way to pass over. I've tried different azimuths. Uh, there's a problem with um, interference here. I get a comb of kind of interfering carriers at many times of the day. Uh, I've also had a strong uh, spurious at 1420.8, although it doesn't seem to be active right now. So there's all sorts of um, things that stand in the way of getting a signal. Uh, I've got a clear view to the north here. That's looking north, there are no buildings in the way. And I got a partially clear view to the east here, and a fairly blocked view to the south. So this evening what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and receive uh, signals from the Milky Way uh, looking east and maybe northeast. Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Friday, July the 15th, and I'm just looking at SDR Sharp here. We're trying to receive the hydrogen line. I've pointed my dish due east, and if you look at Stellarium, you can see that in about another hour, uh, the Milky Way will be right on top of the east azimuth, so that will be the optimum direction to look. <clears throat> now you can see the signal has a lot of discrete components in here. It seems to be some sort of a comb interference signal, and it's varying in power as well. So I'll show you what happens when I take a background. I have to take a background of the dish and the LNA and the BPF. If not, then I can't get rid of this, this comb structure and it just dwarfs everything. So to show you what happens, I'll reset it and I'll do a background. You see all that stuff? That's the discrete interference on top of the dish. What that is, I don't know. Uh, I think this location is very hot electromagnetically. So we're going to do this background. Okay, there's the background with the WIP, the LNA, and the RTL. We can see the characteristic. There's the background with the dish. There's a lot of comb interference there. And once that's averaged out, that's what we see. And this is the final picture. There's so much comb interference that even when it's averaged out, there's no possibility of receiving the hydrogen line. At least I didn't, I didn't see it. So my next step is to, um, I have to go out of town or into a very uh, isolated spot to see if I, can, uh, uh, if I can receive the line because it's not going to be possible the way it is.